So Carl, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Funnily enough, I actually did have a bottle of Frosties. Really? My, yeah, my housemate had a, a box of them on the shelf. Like, you know what, I'm fucking having them. If I'm recording a video today about Frosties, I'm gonna have some fucking Frosties. So Carl, how do they taste? All right, actually. We are talking about Frosties today because of one man, Phil Ravenscroft, known primarily for two things, his insanely metal sounding name and the fact he voiced Tony the Tiger for about five decades. They're great. It was a gig so sweet it actually came with its own private limo. So I've never heard of this guy, who is he? He was only mostly active um, a few decades ago. Obviously Tony the Tiger is the most famous one, 1952 to 2005, so five decades playing one character. Um, he also sung the song You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, from the original Grinch Steel's Christmas Story. You're a mean one. Mr. Grinch, you really are a heel. A place a lot of people might actually recognise from is Disneyland. Uh, he's the voice of a lot of attractions. He is um, a singing bust in the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> he is on that big boat that takes people around. He's one of the pirates in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. They actually loved his voice so much because it had the Disney experience that he is in Japan. When they built Disneyland in Japan, they just used his voice clips, even though no fucker could understand what he's saying. The only thing they use in Japan are directions. Then that's in Japanese. Otherwise, they use all of our dates. So he was pretty prolific. Though. Yeah, amazingly prolific. His uh, IMDb page is longer than a giraffe stick. But the role he enjoyed the most, Tony the Tiger, because that's the only one he did after he retired from the world of acting. Out of interest, do you know what the origin of their great actually is? Yes, um, Ravenscroft came up with that himself. Uh, in the original script and the treatment for Tony of a Tiger he got sent, um, it just said the line was, so Tony, are they any good? And the line that Tony's supposed to say back is, good, they're great. And Ravenscroft thought, that's, that's a bit flaccid. That's not really going to sell many boxes of cereal to kids, so that's got to be the money shot. I messed around and I finally came up with a girl, you know, and I'm still doing him. So that's the same thing, all you do is put the intonation on it. Yes, exactly. Right. But the intonation is what people want. If he would just, if he would just been a tagline, good, they're great. If it's, it's the great, that's the bit that sells it. Yeah, because he's a tiger, obviously. When I was writing this and I looked at it and went, oh, grr, he's a tiger. It's taken me my entire life. I am a 26 year old man and I never realised the reason he goes grrr is because he's a tiger. Do I tell you the thing I did to my sister that one time? It's the meanest thing I've ever done. When she was about five, I promised her a tenner if she could finish a tiger jigsaw puzzle and it was just a box of frosties. Is Phil short for anything? I don't know. It's an odd name. No. That's what I say, it's a really awesome name. It sounds like the guy should be sat in a castle. With his bowl of frosties <laughs> and his tiger minions. So you mentioned a limo all the time. Yes, um, as he got older, you can imagine, as you get older, you find it harder to do things like walk, shit, piss, or pretend to be a cartoon tiger. And Kellogg's, rather than replace Thurl, like, or some other soulless corporate bullshit like that, said, no, we will send a private limo to pick you up whenever we need you to record lines. How long did they do that for? Until he fucking died. He voiced Tony until, um, I think the last advert was a few months before he passed away, at age 91 in 2005. So he voiced Tony for 53 fucking years. It's pretty iconic, isn't it? Well, it is. It's one of the most famous yeah. uh, advertising mascots of all time. The only other one I think even matches it is the rooster from Cornflakes. Nothing gets you crowing in the morning like Kellogg's Cornflakes. Do you know what the rooster on the front of Boxes of Cornflakes is called? Cornelius. How good is that? Cornelius! Yes! Any name that's got corn in it. Yeah. <laughs> How many? Like, Give me one other name with corn in it. Other than Cornelius or Cornelius Jr. I'll wait. This is going in. <laughs> this awkward silence. There we go. I'm assuming how about, how about, fuck you. <laughs> but he fucking loved being Tony the Tiger. He, I enjoyed being this cartoon tiger. And there's an anecdote like shortly after he died from a guy who tried to get him to do some light voiceover work when Ravenscroft was in his 80s. Bear in mind, he still did the voice of Tony until he was 91. 
And the guy, like Kellogg's, offered to send him a private limo. If you go to my studio, it's just a couple of lines, that's all I need. And Ravenscroft was like, very politely, I'm, I'm sorry, but I only do the tiger. Thanks. Thanks, Ravenscroft. You did all right. Should I say great? No. <laughs> I don't think anyone can, to be honest, after he did it. So I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, why not like, leave a comment, or subscribe if you want to get more content like this. Didn't you tell me a story about Tony the Tiger's Twitter feed? <gasps> oh, yes, 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 yes. I fucking love this story. This is a true story. You can look this up online. This happened. This is a real thing. Tony the Tiger's Twitter feed gets bombarded by furries. And this much is known, but not a lot of people know why. People think, oh, he's... he's is, is a, it is an animal. No, no, no. It goes deeper than that. I've done research. It's because not only is he a big, huge, buff tiger, but also because he wears the bandana. And there's a thing, and this is true. Again, I've done research. You, don't have to, you can go on Wikipedia where it's safe for work and you can do it. But there is this thing called bandana code, I think it is. And it's basically the idea of um, back in the 80s, um, gay men would put bandanas like in their back pocket to tell you what kind of sex they were into. And it goes all the way from like, I am into like people pissing on me to just, I want to be anally fisted. So a lot of people see Tony the Tiger, this big buff, handsome tiger who's happy all the time. And then they see the bandana and think, oh, he's definitely up for getting fisted. So people, <laughs> every time the official Tony the Tiger Twitter account would tweet something, there'll be people just sending messages, please fist me daddy. <laughs> what he did is he blocked them all. Whoever was in charge of a Twitter account blocked them. But it didn't end there because there is another Twitter account belonging to another cartoon mascot for Chester the Cheetah for Cheetos and he fucking loved it. He didn't care. <laughs> People just think, you know what I'm going to do a day. I'm just going to message this virtual tiger and just ask him to derail me. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they got turned down by the tiger you know what, you know who's really up for it though? That fucking cheater who sells Cheetos wearing the sunglasses. And then this caused a backlash. Because obviously their account wasn't blocking anything, but the Kellogg's one was. So they had to issue an official statement on the Tony the Tiger Twitter account saying, I love all my fans. Let's just keep it PG, there might be cubs watching. Not only did they have to issue a statement, please stop sending our cartoon tiger mascot request to fist his asshole. They had to acknowledge it in the persona of Tony. <laughs> so just, just, just please don't, just please stop asking me to fist you. <laughs>